Hey guys, welcome back. If you've been watching my recent videos, everybody's asking me why I'm on such a strict diet. Is it because of my health? Is something wrong? Am I just doing it for a challenge? Well, in this video, I am going to answer that question for you guys. So if you want a quick answer and you don't feel like watching the whole video, in short, I'm trying to rule out 100% that my diet is strongly affecting my cholesterol. There you go, that's the short answer. If you want to know more details, then stick around. Well, not over here, but right here. So let's rewind to almost a year ago. Last August, I decided to go and get my blood tested because I've never had my blood tested before and I'm a long-term vegan, so I wanted to see what my blood results were after not taking any kind of vitamins or anything like that over all those years. If you've seen that video, you already know the answer, but I basically had pretty good blood work. Uh, my B12 was fine, my protein was fine. My vitamin D was a little bit low, but I do live in upstate New York, in Syracuse actually, where we have the snowiest winters of anywhere in the country and they last for about six to seven months, which is pretty ridiculous. But my cholesterol was where I was pretty shocked. I didn't think I had any reason to worry about my cholesterol since I haven't consumed cholesterol in well over 20 years and I exercise daily, so, and I feel great. I thought my cholesterol was pretty good, but it was a little bit higher than it should be, especially for a vegan. Now they say your cholesterol is supposed to be 200 or under your overall cholesterol. Well, mine was within that range. It was 181 when I first got my blood tested, but the LDL was a lot higher than it should have been for a vegan. I think it was around 123 and my HDL was about 35, 36. So that was a little bit too low, my HDL was a bit, little bit too high, and my triglycerides were about 150. And I had already been eating pretty good, but I decided to take a lot of oil out of my diet. Now I didn't stop eating foods that had oil on it, but I stopped cooking with oil. I used to cook a lot with olive oil, uh, canola oil, and especially coconut oil. So I completely stopped doing that. I started using my air fryer more often. And when I would like fry food, I would use like apple cider vinegar or water instead. After that, I went back three months later to get my blood tested again. And I was gonna do a video on this, but it was the same, everything was the same. Uh, to my surprise, the LDL was around the same, the HDL was around the same. The triglycerides, however, dropped significantly from 150 to 100. And the doctor basically said that it showed in the way I was eating that the triglycerides dropped, but is there anything I can do to get my HDL up, get my LDL down? And he said, exercise. And I said, well, I exercise every day. I, I do no days off. And he said, well, what kind of exercise are you doing? You gotta do some cardio. So I said, all right, well, I could probably run some more. So I started running more, getting my cardio up. And then I went back again after another three months and it was pretty much all the same. So now I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on here. I decided to start eating even better. And the last time I got tested there was at the end of April of this year. And it came back and it was the same. My LDL had actually gone up to about 130 and my HDL stayed pretty much the same. My triglycerides stayed pretty much the same. And now I'm completely confused. And I've also seen a lot of comments saying, well, you know, I'm not eating good. I I'm always going out to restaurants and eating tons of comfort food and the taste test. And although that is partially true, it's not the, the whole picture. I don't really travel as much as it seems like I do. When I do travel, I get as much work done as I can within that time and then I slowly edit those videos and put them out as I get around to them. When I'm home, I rarely ever, and when I say rarely, I 99% of the time, I'm home making my own food. I never go out to eat here and I normally eat really healthy foods. Now, when I do taste test videos, that is like once in a while that I do those taste tests. So that's the exception to the norm. Still, it showed that I was, I had high cholesterol and I didn't know what to do. I was very confused at this point. I didn't want to take medicine. He had suggested that I take medicine, that my liver was producing more cholesterol than it should and he said that 60%, uh, this is my doctor speaking, 60% of the cholesterol comes from your liver and the other 40 comes from diet and about 30 to 50% of that should come 
from your diet. I left there not knowing what to say, what to do, very confused from everything I've learned as a vegan, thinking that I was healthy, and I still promote like a, a proper plant-based diet. I think it's the best diet you can be on, and unfortunately, as a vegan, you can be, you can totally be a junk food vegan. The majority of the years that I was vegan, I was a junk food vegan. I've been vegan for well over 20 years, and it wasn't until about six years ago that I started eating a lot better. I went raw vegan for a little while, and then I, I cut a lot of foods out of my diet, and then I kind of balanced what made me feel good and, and how I felt back into my diet. So I would slowly, gradually start adding different comfort foods back into my diet, and based on how I felt, if I felt sluggish or lethargic or something like that, I would you know, go back to eating a little bit better and stuff like that. So over the last six years, this is how I kind of did it. And I felt great and I even felt great. I feel great now. So yeah, I was very confused. I didn't schedule another appointment with the doctor when I left and I ended up shortly after that going to a vegan doctor came from Rochester to speak here in Syracuse at a free event. And I went there and I filmed the presentation. And at the end, I went up and I spoke to him. I said, look, hey, I've been vegan for well over 20 years. I exercise every day, I eat healthy, and yet my cholesterol is high. And he wanted to know the numbers. And he's like, well, how healthy are you eating? And I thought to myself, well, I, I think I eat pretty healthy. But uh, that's pretty much what did it. At that point, I took some advice and then I, I looked on the internet for Dr. Esselstyn, who, if you haven't heard of him, most of, uh, the vegans out there have. He's been in Forks Over Knives and some other documentaries and he's uh, a leading doctor on reversing heart disease and cholesterol and obesity and stuff like that with proper strict plant-based diet. So he was uh, the head of the Cleveland Clinic back in the 90s and he very renowned heart doctor. So I followed his diet which is no salt, no sugar, no oil, no nuts, no avocado, no white flour, no white rice. So what can you eat? That was the challenge and I felt kind of like I was back to being a brand new vegan when I didn't really know what to do and I had to kind of like figure out what to make. And I'm a, I'm a great cook and a great chef in the kitchen and I can kind of make up whatever on the fly and make it taste good. But I had to make different foods and I had to make them taste good without salt and that was the one hang up for me because after a while they say your palate kind of changes, your cravings kind of changes, change when you don't have that kind of food and that is true. Like for instance, I was always craving sweets and especially chocolate after I would eat and after being away from it for a while I stopped craving those things. However, when I would make a dish I would put all kinds of different seasonings and spices in it but when you can't put salt in something it still tastes kind of bland no matter what else is in there and I've tried everything like literally I, I use a lot of apple cider vinegar and tomato paste and uh, lemon lime I've used I've tried the dulse I've tried the kelp I've tried salt alternatives like everything out there I've tried and nothing really worked and then I ended up doing some research after about a month of doing this and I found that Dr. Greger, who is from nutritionatfacts.org, recommended miso. He said that he, there are some studies that show that eating a little bit of miso, which is already a, a salty bean paste, that the fermentation of the bean counteracts what the sodium does to your body. So he suggests using a little bit of miso, and that's what I started doing. I used some white miso, I dilute it with a little bit of water and then I pour it over my food and it's amazing, it tastes great, you get that salt taste. So that kind of saved me right there and I've been fine after that do, doing what I've been doing. I didn't know how long to do this because I didn't really wanna, I wasn't really having too much fun doing this but I stuck with it 100%, I didn't stray from it. He says, you know, don't, there are no cheat days, there are no special occasions, so you gotta do it all or none. That's no oil. It's, so that's what I did, and after about a month, I'm like, okay, so I don't know how much longer I wanna do this, but I do wanna know, I do want to be able to go get my blood tested and have, if it's gonna do anything, have that change happen for me. So after about a month of doing it, 
I did a little bit of research and I said, how long does it take to change your cholesterol? And I saw a few things say in three months and I found a few things say in three weeks to a month. So I decided to go get blood tested and I'm waiting for those results. I don't know what they are yet. So technically I could go and eat whatever I wanted now, but I'm still kind of sticking to the diet. Uh, I kind of want to stick to that. I don't really crave any of those foods with oils or anything like that. You'd be surprised when you start doing this, how many foods, even the vegan foods out there that actually have oils and sodium and, and sugar and everything in it. Now, that's why he says stick to the whole food. So what I've been eating are a lot of greens, a lot of uh, different vegetables. And for grains, I've been eating quinoa and brown rice and just using different seasonings for that. I've been making like smoothie bowls. I don't really know too much if I should have been making a smoothie bowl because he says chew your food, don't blend it, don't juice. So I've been sticking to all of that and I'm excited to find out what my results are gonna be. However, I have, I have a couple different theories on, I have three different theories, so on what could happen. Now either I get my results back and it shows a significant change where my cholesterol dropped and I guess that's good and bad because well, the good would be that you know I got my cholesterol in a very healthy number ratio. But the bad thing would be, I don't really know if I wanna eat this way for the rest of my life. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people are asking me how I feel on this diet and I feel great, but I felt great before. So I really don't feel any different. But what I will say is that without trying to, I'm still eating every day and I'm still working out every day, uh, just eating different foods. I've lost about 15 pounds in one month. So that is a that's a major physical change right there now the other the other possibility that could happen and i don't know and i never believed this but i'm starting to question everything just because i know how i eat and i know going to get my blood tested the, what the results have been and so some people say genetics and other people say that the whole genetic thing is bs and it's all about how you eat whether that's the case or not whether it's genetics or whether whatever it is but my body is making more cholesterol than it should. So that could be something going on because it's not changing. And when I was eating better, the LDL actually went up, went, went up. So I don't really know what's going on there. And then the other thing that I kind of uh, read a little bit about, but I'm not too sure if it's true or, you know, I'd have to read more about it, but I did see something on it and I can't remember where I saw it, but that for some people that your cholesterol is just normally higher than other people and I kind of hope that that's what's happening here because I don't want to have to give up all these other foods for the rest of my life just to have my cholesterol under control and when I say that I don't even know if my cholesterol is too much out of control because I did a little uh, a google search and that said that within the range that I had with my LDL that it was near optimal. So it wasn't the best I can have, but it was still okay. And the doctor kind of said that as well. He said, you know, I'm not worried about you because you are active, you are healthy, you do exercise and you do eat good. So I'm not too worried, but you know, we could give you medicine and I didn't want to take medicine. I want to try to figure this out with what I put in my body that's not medicine, like whole foods. That's where I'm at here. I know a lot of you guys gave me a lot of comments on my last blood test video from last August. And I gotta say that I appreciate everything. I read every comment and I took suggestions and I was trying to figure out like, you know, maybe is it this, could I do this? And I love your feedback. If you have a similar experience, if you have any advice or anything like that, feel free. Yeah, just post below and I will read your suggestions. And like I said, I'm, I'm waiting to go get the results from the blood test that I just took and we'll know what's going on from there. So I hope you like this video. Give me that thumbs up if you did. Stay safe, watch out for zombies, eat your greens, and I will see you guys soon.